Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, then please do not continue to listen until after you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today, we are covering, you could call it a palate cleanser. <laughs> it's called The Cleanse. <laughs> and we are also drinking our cleanses today. I am drinking the Numi Earl Grey tea. What are you drinking? I went and got the organic matcha green tea from Costco. It's Kirkland's. Hmm green tea, but I did bougie it up a little bit and put a little bit of ginger puree. Ooh. I bet that helps. I I put ice, it melted it all, but it's now cold brewed. Ah. See, mine, I also don't, I like to be able to drink mine pretty quickly, so I don't, didn't make mine super hot, but it's like, it's warm to the touch, which is good because my hands are freezing. So... The cleanse. You are following this character who obviously has some baggage. He is super socially awkward and he... He I forgot. He left at the altar. Yes. And anyways, he's just going through the motions. Yes. And (laughs) not, not to judge him, poor guy. But he sees an ad for this retreat And it's so funny because they set it up to where it's like, oh, you know, you get to do this, you get to do this, you're going to feel pure. And they're like, and it's free. And of course, as soon as he's like, it's free, (laughs) that's when he's like, ah, perked up. So it's him and then this girl named Maggie that gets chosen. And then this this couple, which I forgot their names. Eric and Lori. Thank you. And he starts connecting to Maggie because like right off the bat, she already gives him like a really tragic backstory. Story, and then he's like, I'm so sorry to hear about like your husband that killed himself. And she's like, I made it up. <laughs> so it's like, it already has an interesting start, but they are drinking these drinks and they start purging and these creatures come out of them. And we're just going to get into the detail of the entertainment scale. Thankfully, so. our cleanses will not do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our our cleanses are I it honestly look like the the juice juicer stuff where it's like you put a bunch of veggies, but I mean it's got like no fiber and way too much content in it, but yeah. four of those I can't imagine. But anyways, entertainment scale. I've gotta say this movie a third of it is what the heck is going on a second of it is like just laughing at the ridiculousness and then the third is just like kind of accepting your fate and being like i <laughs> like they 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 knew that they wanted to make fun of like the cleansing movement and but then they also took it somewhere that i wasn't expecting <laughs> just and then also like kind of also was addressed some things about people carrying emotional baggage so i this movie confuses me okay yes so this is the second time i've seen this movie and i took it more as yes they were obviously making heavy fun of like the cleansing and juicing kind of movement the cleanse was specially formulated for each individual person and they were only supposed to drink theirs But they had to drink all four of the giant jars, the giant mason jars. They're big. They were like the 18 to 24 ounce, it looked like, jars in a day. But I mean, that's also, to be fair, that's all they could eat. Yeah, that day. Yeah. And then they said that there would be additional food kind of things in their cabins. Yeah, it's vegetable sure. broth. <laughs> but it was all vegetable broth. <laughs> Which, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, though, if you're, like, throwing up and having diarrhea, you probably don't want to go too heavy, so I'd... No, but 
but I mean, at least some bone broth or something for some kind of protein. Like it was all yeah, that's true. Broth, which has almost no substance. It's like ninety five percent water, and the rest of it is some veggies ish. It's like essence of veggie. Like it's not essence of veggie. Any- well, that's what it looked like, especially in the generic looking cans. Like not not name brand stuff or anything. It's generic yeah. kind of cans. Like they went cheap and got it from like the dollar store or something kind of cans. Yeah. But <laughs> so they're doing these cleanses and all, and when they purge, um, they are throwing up a lot. Uh one guy did Eric did say that it was coming out both ends. And <laughs> thankfully, he only had one monster <laughs> come out of him. I'd hate to see the other one. Oh, oh, why would you say that? But these monsters get bigger. And it is a purge of the toxicity in their life, the the negative emotions and feelings and and things that are holding them back personified. Yeah. Is what it's supposed to be. And to finish the cleanse, you're supposed to kill the monster. But they've kind of bonded with it, which is a problem. Yeah, it's kind of like a baby. Yeah, they've bonded with it, which is a problem. And they're supposed to kill it to signify that they're letting go. And they're releasing all of that negativity and everything that they're holding on to, which is very toxic and very much hindering their lives and just impacting their quality of life. So at the end, the monsters actually kind of merged. The two Mm -hmm. that were in the bag kind of merged together. They don't really go into detail on that or why or anything. Yeah. He, to be fair... He does seem very, like, codependent and very, very clingy. So I'm not that surprised that his monster kind of clinged onto hers. <laughs> yeah. Um, but when they end up killing the monster together, that signifies them moving on. Like, they're letting go of all of those hurtful, negative feelings, the things that hurt them in the past all of that negative energy, they're getting rid of it. And that's a hard thing to do, to address it and let go. And I think it's actually kind of cool that they even had them attached to their monsters, because I feel like for some people, they are very much attached to habits that or or emotional scars that can be toxic to themselves. It's just um, a type of coping mechanism. Some people cling to their pain because that's all they know. And the unknown is scary. And moving on is scary. Change is a difficult thing a lot of times. And some people don't know how to do that. So they cling to the things they know, even if it hurts them. Mm -hmm. So as much as it sucks and as scary as it is, they they did kill the monster. (laughs) Because holding on to all that toxic and negative things would... It would be the death of them eventually. Yeah. Yeah, you get to see um, the groundskeeper guy. He gets killed by his monster. Fredericks. But, uh, but it's like, it's so funny. I'm, I was about to say my rating, and you went down this whole rabbit hole. I'm like, oh, this, this is what we're doing. I didn't quite like understand it. So I was giving my perspective. Well, no, I, it's not. It's not that I didn't understand it. it. It's like, I understand where they're trying to get at. It's just such a, like, why does this movie exist movie or moment? You know, it's, it's, it's like zombie ass. It's just like, it didn't need to exist, but it does. But it does. And it's hilarious. Honestly, like with the, it's not very scary, scary, but it's very odd and like unsettling. It's there like some moments of like WTF, ew, no, get it away, <laughs> like gross out kind of scare things. But for those, scary. yeah, like for those who 
are familiar with the Greasy Strangler. I consider the Greasy Strangler a horror movie, but The Cleanse is way more palatable than The Greasy Strangler is. But, like, th- this movie is entertaining. I don't know if I would ever rewatch the whole thing. Maybe once or twice. It's more like certain scenes that I would rewatch. So I would I would give this uh movie probably a seven. Yeah, I would give it about a on a horror scale, I would probably give it about a five or six. But it is a comedy horror. Like it is a it is satire. But the entertainment scale. It's like satire. And entertainment wise Definitely a seven. Definitely. If nothing else for the scene when the lady is coming across the bridge and screaming. We were dying. Tribal scream therapy or something. (laughs) But she comes across like they're talking and they're looking out at this beautiful scene. And then all of a sudden behind them, you hear this scream. Yeah, like blood curdling scream. And she's just she's got a big smile on her face, but she's just screaming. And she's like, like. (laughs) <laughs> just like screaming and like egging them on and then they're like all awkwardly like ah like, <laughs> like Fredericks is like let it out <laughs> yeah go with it yeah and they're all awkwardly like looking at each other and like kind of half-heartedly screaming <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my god it yeah crazy. it's like if you don't want to watch the whole movie at least watch like Kind of like the. F- it, it's about 17 and a half minutes in. I was oh. looking when we went back to rewatch it a few times. <laughs> oh. It's about 17 and a half minutes in. And it's only a few seconds long, that, that part. <laughs> totally worth it, even out of context. Totally yeah. Worth. Like I showed it to Steven and he just started laughing. It's just such a WTF moment. <laughs> It's just, like it looks like she's like she's singing and she's just, but no she, it's like a blood curdling scream and then like her scream is just it's so perfect <laughs> it really reminds me of that like spoof clip of a yoga class with the Grinch and they're like release all of the negative feelings inside yeah. and the Grinch just screams real big and everybody looks at him he goes I'm a little messed up <laughs> that's exactly what it reminds me of oh man but <laughs> yeah this this movie like I I feel like you know there there's honestly I at least for me personally there's a little bit more to dig deep with the the couple like uh Lori and Eric, yeah, Lori and Eric. but it's like I would have to um, I would have to rewatch the movie and digest it a little bit more to kind of comprehend what, because with the main characters, that was a little bit more obvious what they're trying to do. But with those, I feel like they're being a lot more subtle about it. Yeah. So they don't really show them as much because, of course, they're not the main character. But what... I saw a little bit of is that of course they're having relationship issues. They do allude to that a few times. He seems, and please pardon my language, but he seems like an asshole (laughs) and like, not necessarily that he's trying to be just that he kind of is. And she seems very much kind of beaten down emotionally and mentally and just, almost done but still kind of clinging to the hope that they can fix whatever they have so they go on this retreat and he does in his own kind of weird way he does seem to care for her a lot despite him making fun of it the entire time he does try and he does drink all of his jars of nasty crap and (laughs) he purges both ends Part of that might have been the alcohol that he snuck in in a flax, which they did say you're not supposed to consume any outside food or otherwise. Yeah. So that might have, like, <laughs> enhanced it a little bit, <laughs> maybe. I'm not entirely sure. But he does, 
he does try to go through the whole program and he does try to encourage her to finish her cleanse Mm -hmm. and to drink all of it. She was stuck on that last jar and couldn't seem to really get it down. And he told her like, pinch your nose and, and drink it though. He did say sip. You're supposed to just like chug it, chug it, just gulp it down, get it done and over with the less time it's on your tongue, the better. (laughs) It's like medicine. But, um, and then he, he kind of comforts her a little bit in bed and all. And he does say, you need to finish it. Have you purged once? Yeah. Like, you're that can't be good. You need to do this. Though, he was also kind of drinking hers. Yeah. Which well, no, no. <laughs> and... Well, what I my impression is, yes, he definitely had his problems, but she multiple times throughout the movie was like, you need to like improve yourself. And so and so I kind of got the impression that she was so focused on what was wrong with him that she wasn't focusing on, well, how can I improve as well? And I kind of feel like that was a part of the problem of the relationship. If she was being like, you know, it's all about you, you know, you're the one causing the problems in this relationship. And she's not reflecting and being like, well, you know, is there something that maybe I did as well? So I did get that a little bit too. And that might be kind of what they're trying to portray as well. When she died was that she was, she wouldn't address her own issues and kept them in too much. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. She wouldn't release anything. She didn't purge anything. That makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this movie is strangely deep. <laughs> <laughs> but it's they do it in a in a funny way. Yeah. In a lighthearted kind of way. Like it's not a very heavy movie. Mm-mm. on the whole except like toward the very end yeah like if you had like an older kid i feel like this would be a good movie that'd be like this is you know to kind of help you know this is to digest like this is what happens when you hold on to tex- toxic things or you're not like open or yes. you know <laughs> open to change you address your own issues yes and grow as a person yeah it's a, a it's almost because you know how a lot of kid movies will kind of like they'll have their own storylines, but they kind of essentially break down uh, complex uh, concepts for kids. I almost feel like it's the adult movie version of that where it's breaking down a complex <laughs> subject. It kind of is. <laughs> a little bit. And now Maggie, hers was a little more superficial, I feel like. Her issues. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of her issues are, like, real problems. Um, She was an actress, and she was told... She had an audition for a little while, and she finally went back for an audition. And she was told she wasn't thin enough for the part. And that really hurt her mentally. And you see her at one point, like, hitting herself around her stomach and thigh kind of area and then going for a jog. So clearly she has some kind of like mental issues with her, her body and how she looks and everything, which Mm -hmm. is fairly common. Especially when you're in that profession. Oh yeah. Especially in that profession. But if you take a look at our society, like, Honestly, you're bombarded with ads after ads of you don't look good unless you use this. Yeah, which it, it's gotten a lot better than what it used to be, but there needs to be improvement for sure. There's, yeah. There's still a lot out there. And <laughs> well, I know like, yeah, well, like the, the whole beauty industry is built on you need this product so you can look this way. So it's like, honestly, I, I can't picture the industry changing very much because it is dependent on you thinking you're not good enough in order for you to buy a product. Um, no, I agree. <clears throat> um, I, I actually used to have quite a bit of issues that way too. And I still every now and then feel that way, but I feel like it has actually helped not having 
services that have constant commercials. So yes, we don't have yes, TV, we don't have TV. We just have specific streaming services that we pay not to have commercials on. Yeah, so we don't see crap like that. Yeah, constantly. It helps a lot for sure. It like does. commercials, especially like whenever they're on the re- on repeat and they're like anti aging, and you're just like, ah, uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, But when you think about it, like things like that, some of those ads are now kind of funny to me because at the same time, aging is kind of what happens when you stay alive. <laughs> like that's a thing that naturally occurs. Yeah. Yeah. But it's um, kind of unavoidable. <laughs> yeah. But we digress. Um, but I do find it another thing um, referring back to Maggie, one thing that's interesting too is, you know, during this cleanse and this time that they're just eating the vegetable broth, she's continuously exercising. And I mean, she's got to know that she's not having enough calories or sustenance. So she's purposely taking advantage of that to try and lose more weight. But um, I kind of got the impression that, you know, that the whole like her losing weight did hit her on a deeper level but also the fact that whenever she's talking about these guys, I kind of got the impression that um, on the deeper level, it's like she's never good enough. So it's, she's never good enough for the men. She's never good enough for, um, you know, getting a, a part in an audition. So it, it's not just she's trying to lose weight. It's it's kind of what she was focusing on. Yeah. But I feel like if she was, quote unquote, skinny enough, there would always be something that she felt was wrong with her. Oh, there is. There yeah. is. That was just the straw that broke the camel's back, I feel like. Yeah. So that's what she hyper focuses on. Yeah. And exercising when she's in that state is basically a way to punish herself. Because she feels she's not good enough. And yeah, she's not good enough for the part. She's not good enough for those guys and all. But really, she's not addressing the true problem as she feels like she's not good enough for herself. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. she never fully addresses. Yeah. And because um, whenever they kill it, is it mainly the main guy that... He starts... But as she's watching him oh, she- and realizes what has to be done, mm-hmm. she does kneel down and help him. Okay, so maybe that's kind of uh, the movie's way of letting you know that she addressed her. But yeah, this this movie, it's so strange because it's... There's a lot to digest. <laughs> a lot more than you think. Yeah, it's like service level. It. It's hilarious and it's kind of nasty and it's just such a strange movie. But then whenever you break it down, it's actually a more serious subject. Like I, it's I love movies like this. It's just such a, a mind blow moment. It's like it's nothing that was like revolutionary. You know, it's like we didn't necessarily learn anything from the movie, but it, it it's like a nice reminder on you know don't carry your your baggage if it's holding you back um but well especially with uh fredericks fredericks is the big cautionary tale yeah yeah because yeah he survived and for the most part until that the end there and his monster grew so big and it was obviously dangerous you see toward the beginning of the movie like he has a massive scratch on his arm that look kind of bad. It, I mean, not terrible, but not good. Yeah. So he's been dealing with that, and they said he's been there for a while. So he just couldn't let go, and it eventually killed him. Yeah. Yeah. So this movie is definitely entertaining, and if you like the movies where you can kind of dig a little bit deeper and reflect... This is definitely the movie for you. Um, did you? Is there anything else you want to add before we moved on to reali- uh, realism? Not for the inter- or entertainment scale. It was. It's pretty straightforward for the most part. There's a little bit of depth there that's unexpected, but it's, yeah, it's a really entertaining movie. Even if you don't like dig into it, it's 
certain scenes are worth the watch in and of itself. <laughs> well, I guess the only other thing I will add is, you know, this movie... I feel like they really knew what they were doing. Like it, it kept pretty well focused, which is what made the message so crystal clear. And I also think it was smart of them to keep the cast super small because if the, if it had, I was actually surprised it was only four people in the retreat. But then after watching it, it's like if they had any more, they really couldn't develop them like they were able to. So that way you can really... Yeah, so it really helps you pick apart each of the people in the retreat and kind of understand, you know, what the movie not necessarily explains, but you're like, okay, so this is, you know, um, helps you better uh, reflect on the the character and what happens to them, for sure. Yes. I do also love that they didn't go with CGI. Yes, that was really nice. They actually seem to use props and animatronics and things like that yeah the, the creatures so that, that really, really helped yeah if they had used um 3d animation or computer animation that would have been a huge detriment to the film so i think that was a very smart choice on their part and the main reason is um how often the actors interact with the 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 creatures because it's like it doesn't matter how good of a like a point or focal point you have the actors like whenever they're act interacting with uh cg it does not you can tell it's not there um kind of breaks the the illusion yeah and i mean these animatronics looked good like they They were well done. Yeah, very well done. So huge props to the special effects team. I mean, that that was done very well. Yes. And they had to do a few different kinds, not just for the people, but they did get bigger as the story progressed. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they spent some some time working on those for sure. So well done there. And, it, well done. and it's interesting because, well, it, it's also really neat that, you know, this is such such a random movie, but between the creatures themselves, they make them look very different. Like, they personalize them. Yeah. Like, they had... It's supposed to be a, a piece of that person. Yeah. So they have different characteristics and traits of the person they came from. Yeah, it's, it, it's like, they didn't need to do that, but it really added to the film. So I'm I'm happy that they did that. Yeah, it's like, this movie is a little, a little gem, I gotta say. Like, it, like it, you know, it's not going to be in my arsenal of, like, I'm gonna watch this movie all the time, but I am, I do not regret watching this movie whatsoever. Uh, and, yeah, it's not like an all-the-time kind of movie, but if it's on, I would definitely watch it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but. but let's go ahead and move along to realism. Yes. Oh. Uh, let's, let's suspend reality a little bit for the fact that a monster came out of their vomit. Yeah. Well, I guess as far as the realism, what I'm going to focus more on is the whole concept of this free resort in the first place i mean they they've got cabins they've got they're supplying them with like food and um decent plumbing like there's no way that they can offer these services for free um so i'm calling huge bs on that unless unless if they take donations which they made no reference to hmm my thought on that was I kind of understand it since it's a very, very new thing. If they have the first couple of runs free to up the hype. Maybe. And then they'd have like free publicity. because Yes. And then publicity and all. Once people see how much they've changed when they come out of it, then they spread the word and then people would flock that way. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. But it does make it sound very cultish, no matter how you look at it. Well, and then the fact that they they paid for the ads. Yeah. Like, it would be different if they're sending, like, stuff through the mail. You know, sending stuff through the mail is super cheap. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, you know, and they were TV ads. Yeah, so that's that's a little bit if they're offering it for free and they were just trying to get more hype, that seems a little bit sketchy, but yeah, I it's it's definitely not sustainable, especially since these people are all getting they're purging these things in like the sink. Uh, it looked like it was the sink for everyone. Yeah. Because it's the closest thing to the, the bed, I guess. But those pipes were melted. It was like acidic. <laughs> Which makes sense from the movie standpoint. These things are toxic. They're they're getting rid of all this negativity and everything. So it, it would kind of make sense that it would kind of eat away and corrode the piping. Yeah. But then you got to replace it for the next round of people. That's that true. That gets expensive. Yeah. So give them a bucket. Right. <laughs> a corrosive resistant bucket. Right. Um, you but got a design flaw, guys. <laughs> and I, I will say the way that they react to the creatures is probably detrimental to at least specifically the realism scale. Like to the movie itself, it benefits it because it helps move along the story. But I'm sorry if there's a, a creature that came from me and it was moving around, like whenever you first see it, I would have smooshed it. But the, the thing is that's, I think that's why they showed the scene with the, the rat. That he couldn't kill, that he called the Super Four. Oh. Was that he doesn't have it in him to kill to something. Hmm. Even when it's like in pain. Yeah. <laughs> like the rat. That was awful. That was bad. That was a horrendous scene. You hear it like screaming or in pain. Suffering in that trap and everything just ended. That's a mercy at that point. Well, it's like there's other types of traps where it's not harming it it's just catch and release if you don't want to kill it just ah which is not always the best with those kind of creatures but just to each his own <laughs> there are <laughs> available traps that don't kill it he could have caught it and released it elsewhere that is the thing yeah but he does also seem very squeamish yeah, so I would, I'm thinking of giving this movie a five, because it's like, there's some things that I'm like, no, that that probably doesn't seem very realistic, but besides the I'm gut monsters. The, but. the jerk, Eric, didn't kill his right off the bat. He seemed like the type that would be like, oh, no, F that. Maybe. <laughs> just destroyed it. But he seemed know. to like really bond with his. Yeah, I don't know. I worried when it started to like eat its hand. Yeah, and you know, I I do wonder. Um, and I this thought came across my mind whenever we were watching the movie because it's like it's very obvious whenever something happens to the characters, you see it reflected within a few seconds of the monsters. So I wonder what he did that caused the monster to want to eat it. Because obviously the monster is doing self-destructive behavior, so they're trying to show that something he was doing was being self-destructive. Well, he did say at one point, a little bit before then, like when he had the flask, he said, you're looking at me like an I'm, I'm an alcoholic. So oh. he might have been doing some kind of self-destructive behavior, and it might have been reflected that way. That would make sense. What else sense. did the monster have but to eat itself? <laughs> yeah, because I don't really show him drinking that often, but I do remember that scene now that you mention it. Oh. Again, they don't really delve too much into those two characters since they're fairly minor characters. Yeah. But that's... That was my reasoning there. Yeah. But I I do believe a five is pretty solid. Most of their reactions seem pretty accurate. Uh, Maggie is very distant, so she didn't really want to have anything to do with hers. She really had to kind of warm up to it. Yeah. And she did finally let it in, and then it made it that much more difficult when she was told she had to kill it. 
But I think that also reflects like whenever he was trying to ask more information about her and she's like, no, don't want to talk about it. It it was reflecting the fact that she was trying very hard not to address her issues. Yeah. And she didn't want to let anyone in because she felt like she wasn't good enough for anyone. Yeah. Including herself. And that's why her monster kept like running away. Like it kept crying and it oh. wanted attention. But whenever someone would go near it, it would like run away and hide. Yeah. Ah, nice catch. Nice catch. Yeah, the this movie, yeah, if you it is a little bit gross, but not like too bad. Like they don't show them vomiting, you just hear it. So it you see a little bit of vomit. It's not much. And it legitimately just looks like the juice he drank. The orange ish yellow. Yeah, like I, I can't look at vomit. Like it makes me I'm a symp I'm a I'm a let's see, a sympathy. Vomiter. Yeah. It's like if I hear or see someone, it makes me want to do it too. But this movie only like slightly bothered me where I was like, it wasn't like oh you know. Thankfully, they didn't show it in the sink after he threw up or anything like that. They switched to him turning on the faucet. Yeah. So you just see the knob and his hand turning it. And then afterwards, they go to, they do go to the sink, but it's, everything's gone at that point. It's just water going down the drain. Yeah. Really, the grossest part is when you see the the stuff in the, the pipe. But yeah, compared to other stuff we've seen, it's really not that bad at all. Oh, no, this was super mild. Like, I probably wouldn't necessarily eat while watching this movie, but it, that's the extent. Like, it's not that bad at all. Could drink. <laughs> you could drink, yeah. <laughs> but... Um, I will call Bull on there were like no phones anywhere and no one was calling them on it. They didn't try their cell phones even to see if they maybe had signal. I doubt they would in an area like that. It was pretty remote. Mm -hmm. But they didn't even try (laughs) to check their cell phones for a signal. They didn't look for a phone anywhere to like call anyone well, I know. Very upset with them. Yeah, y'all didn't tell us that this was gonna happen. Like there'd be something coming out of us that's moving. Uh, well, a lot of those types of retreats, they do tell you like no electronics, no cell phones. Which I mean, they should have a phone for emergency purposes. But yeah, the movie doesn't establish whether or not they're allowed electronics. But I would assume not. Yeah, they don't mention it at all. And again, when they're really upset, chances are someone's going to try to call someone. (laughs) Be it a family member, PD, (laughs) something, animal control, (laughs) (laughs) something. This parasite came out of me. I I need you to pick it up. (laughs) (laughs) To get to the nearest hospital, nothing. Because again, my first thought, parasite. And if that came out of me, what else is in me? <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly, Eric, I'm surprised that as soon as either his girlfriend got like super sick or like right when she passed, he wasn't like, I'm calling the police, yeah. you know? Well, he he drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like I said, this place is almost kind of cult-like mindset, and he was really starting to get into it after a while, after bonding with his his creature yeah. a little bit, and he seemed all about it. Yeah. And that's why he came across as, you haven't purged once. You haven't finished your cleanse. What are you doing? Though in the beginning of the film, when I, Paul... <laughs> or Leonard <laughs> um, signs his name. I'm assuming that was probably a disclaimer form, or yeah, it it did have. It was a waiver. It was an accident and liability waiver. Okay, so it did mention on their death, so it releases them from any liability if death occurs. Okay, so it's like they could call the police, but it's not like nothing. Well, it cuts kind of dependent against them, but. He still could have called for help. Yeah. Yeah, it's like maybe um, she could have been uh, savable. Yeah, they could have treated her somehow, potentially. Yeah. yeah, like maybe she was, 
becoming unconscious temporarily and then they could like purged her or something and then they could have like helped her recover but yeah she is definitely dead though by the time that you see her and he's laying next to the bed like oh yes yeah i feel bad for her Uh, but definitely but it's all about like each it's it's interesting because each character they all have baggage but they all are dealing with it in different ways and I mean, and it's totally ways that you see real people um, deal with their their issues. Yep. So Some people lash out or do self destructive behaviors. Others seem stuck and can't really move on. They're just almost in a rut. They can't move on, and others hold it in and pretend like it's everybody else's issue. Yeah, but their own. Are there some people that? pretend that there's not an issue and then they just you know go through life so yeah very very interesting movie i like it a lot i like it a lot i'm glad that you convinced me to watch it i was a little bit nervous but i gotta say it it was i thought it was just going to be a stupid horror movie but this this gave me some depth i wasn't expecting for sure right (laughs) But again, like there are certain scenes, even if you're just wanting to watch kind of a funny movie, yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> like I told you, you would laugh this morning, and you did. I did. I did. It's got some really funny, ridiculous scenes. Like this movie, just overall, it's just, it's so funny. It's like it's got you know the the funny ridiculousness that you'd expect with any like weird. Like, not that scary horror movie, but then it gives you this level of depth that you don't expect. So it kind of two sides of the coin. Yeah. It just, you don't expect them to go so well together, but they they seriously did a, a pretty darn good job. Yeah. So there, there's not a whole lot I would change. Like, maybe, like, addressing the electronics and, like, whether or not they're loud and... But... Um, Why did- don't have anything even for emergency things yeah they don't seem to have like a stove or something but what if there's a fire <laughs> like you have to be able to call someone i can i could have sworn like whenever paul goes to throw up i could have sworn in the corner there's a white stove it's like a metal white Maybe. something i don't know maybe it was in a case they definitely need <laughs> Yeah. Some kind of something for emergency services. Yeah. But it's it's a good movie and definitely worth the watch, guys. Yeah. Yeah, and if if you're watching it for the first time after you have seen this episode, let us know. Let us know your thoughts. If you watched the movie prior to watching this episode, let us know your first impressions before you watch this episode. And let us know if you had similar thoughts to what we had. Or if, yeah. you know, you're, if your mind got blown or if you're like, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of a stupid movie. Yes, it's yes. still kind of a gem at the same time. Yeah, it's totally worth it. <laughs> it is, it is. So let us know what you think, guys. And let us know what are some other movies that you want us to watch and review. At this point, this should be our last episode of January. So we're coming up on next month, which is a themed month for Valentine's. Yay! We have some some fun ones there. It is going to be kind of centered around like couples and that kind of thing. And some of them are going to be funny. Others we're hoping are going to be a little scary. Yeah. Very, very unsettling at the least. But let us know what other ones you want us to review for those two. Yes. And of course, like, comment, subscribe, share, share, share. Yes. Our social media everywhere. We are close to our goal of 100 for each one of those. Yeah, we're so close. So close. And coming up on our one year anniversary of starting this podcast yes and in addition to following liking uh our videos as well as like the watch time like youtube they're the way that their algorithm works is it's how many views you get versus how many likes versus how long a person watches a video 
Um, and then also with like social media posts, like the more you like one and um, retweet it or share it or whatever, those algorithms help tremendously with um, with those platforms knowing to promote our content. And it's like we're it's like we're right. I feel like we're right on the cusp of being able to create like a, a good community and so it's like any support would be so very much appreciated like we can't it's like we have our dreams but we can't do this without you guys and any and all support you can provide would be so very much appreciated plus it makes it more fun when you guys talk back with us and yeah and we have an actual open discussion <laughs> It's like the movies and games we do. It's like we don't want to be those like movie critics that's like, oh, my opinion is so much better than yours. You know, it's like we want to essentially be like, this is our thoughts, but let's continue this conversation because the more the more the bigger community we have where we have intelligent discussions on movies and what they mean to us and what we want from them then the more people will be inspired to create horror movies on you know that are do have a deeper meaning and that are better like like the whole better spoops god willing yes yes it's like our goal is to not to crap on Blumhouse, but I'm sorry, you you have a bad reputation, Blumhouse. But I I love some of their movies, but some of their other ones, oh my god, it's like hit or miss. Yeah, we want to move from Blumhouse sci-fi originals to like more like, you know, actual good Yes. Back to the not I would I wouldn't say back to the classics because some of the classics aren't that great, but but <laughs> but update the classics a bit. But to to horror movies that raise the bar up a level to where we can watch it and be scared, but also get something out of it. Just I want more horror movies that can make an impact on our lives rather than a, a cheap thrill. If we could also, like, start a movement to just decrease... They don't have to go away completely. But decrease the jump scares? Yes. That would be wonderful. Yes. Yeah, it's like, that's not scaring. That's startling. It's it's different. It's completely different. And sometimes it's nice just to have that quick release. But it shouldn't be relied upon for the entire movie. Yeah, it's like, create a quick, quick, quick release... Have build up, don't release, you know, kind of like, oh, shush. (laughs) (laughs) Speech impediment, shush. But yeah, just. We also, since this is the the last episode of the month, I do want to remind everyone that weekend after this comes out, we have another live stream. Yes, it's on the, unless if we say otherwise, it's on the first Saturday of every month. Yes. We we try to keep it as consistent as possible, and it should be on the first Saturday of each month, unless, of course, something comes up. And we will let you guys know if that situation occurs. It would either be the weekend before or the weekend after in those situations. And it's so from... Yes, and it's on. It's from uh, seven to nine p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, so it's it's a quick two-hour stream, but. Um, Twitch.tv. It can be rather entertaining to watch us be scared or or just fail because triumph or fail, we're gonna post it all eventually. Yes. And if you do happen to uh, be away from your computers or TVs, you if you miss it, not a big deal. We do post them in parts on YouTube as well. Yes. or if you want to go back and rewatch how stupid we are playing those games, you can always view those as well. Yes, yes. Relive those oh. moments of our failure. <laughs> or our triumph. <laughs> <laughs> and relive all of those funny moments with us. Yes. So. Okay. so, we'll see you guys there. And, of course, on the next episode as well. Until then, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you.